Okay, guys, more on Logic Pro X 10.4.2 new features. Um, this is a good one. New mixer mode allows channel strip fader and pan controls to be used to set the send level and pan. It's uh, phrased a bit cryptically, but this is really cool. Okay, so here's that uh, previous, uh, the project from the previous video where I showed you about um, setting the project tempo from a collection of stems. And here in the mixer, there's one of the guitar channels soloed. Right. Okay. Now, let me just turn the level up a bit. Now, on every single one of the channels, I've put two auxiliaries. Uh, you don't have to put auxiliaries on every channel, obviously, but that's what I've done. The first auxiliary send sends out to this auxiliary return channel with an echo on it, and the second auxiliary send sends out to this auxiliary return also with an echo on it. Okay, so everything's as normal. This is the level leaving the channel. I turn up auxiliary send one, it sends some of the signal out to this auxiliary return, so we get echo. Okay, now once you've created at least one auxiliary on one of the channels, this send on faders becomes active here. Bam, switch it on, and then the faders are con and the pan are controlling the selected auxiliary from the list here of all available auxiliaries. So set it to auxiliary one, set it to auxiliary two, the fader and the pan are controlling whichever selected auxiliary, right? Okay, let's put it to one. So this now controls the send amount. Brilliant. Completely different and independent to the original fader level for the signal leaving the channel. Right? This is just controlling the send now. But you'll notice that the pan controls have disappeared. Right, now if I go to this auxiliary here and activate independent pan for the uh, send that's being controlled by fader and pan, the pan control appears. Now there's a pan control on the channel, but it's not controlling the pan of the original signal leaving this channel, it's controlling the pan leaving the send. Right? So if I switch this off, my original signal is leaving the channel panned straight down the middle. But whatever amount I turn the send up by, it's being panned 35 to the left, because I've panned the send over to the left there. Right? And the meter on the channel switches to show you the, posi the pan position of the send. Switch that off, my original, uh, the actual channel is still sending out right down the middle and the meter now shows that. Switch it to this, I'm panning my send to the left and the meter shows that. Right, very, very cool, very cool indeed. Because it's now really quick to do things like um, this. Let me just reset that pan right for the send to the center. And um, I can pan my guitar over this side like that, the signal leaving the actual dry channel. And then I can switch this on and my auxiliary send can be panned a similar amount the other way, right? And then if I go to my echo here, just turn it down. It doesn't go very low this, um, it only goes down to sixteenths. But I'm getting now that classic thing where my original channel is patterned to the left, sending the dry guitar to the left, and the echo send is sending out to the right. So I get that like panned across the speakers thing very, very quickly without having to fiddle around too much. Very, very good. Um, 
So yeah, now other things is really useful. Let's just reset the the pan from the send. Um, other things that are really useful. Let's say I pan my original guitar. I don't know, thirty two to the left. I can drop this uh, list down. Now, I don't need this to be on now, right? I can drop this list down for the auxiliary send and copy the pan to the send. So my dry signal leaving the channel is panned exactly the same as the signal leaving the send. So on the auxiliary return, my whatever the effect is, is panned exactly the same to the left as the original channel. That's really cool. And you can do the same um, with the fader. Just reset that and then reset that. Copy pan to send. It'll now be centered again because I've copied this centered pan to the send. OK. Another thing you can do is set your fader at whatever level and then copy that exact level amount. Copy fader to send to the send. So the signal leaving the send is now identical in level to the signal leaving the dry channel. So look, if I just change this to a different delay, let's choose the stereo delay, we can get a shorter delay time then, and set a really, really, wait, let's turn them both to the lowest and link them. A nice short delay time, not too much feedback. Okay, so I can do this. I pan my guitar all the way to the left and set the amount for leaving the, the actual original channel. I then switch and it's set um, 54 to the left. Switch this on pan my echo send 54 to the right and then that's the level of the guitar leaving the original channel going to the left and I now copy um, the cause I, I, what I've done is I've set it so the echo send is sending to the right the same amount as the original signal channel is sending to the left. And now I just want to match their levels. So I drop this down and do copy fader level to send. And now I know that the signal leaving the auxiliary send on the right is at exactly the same, is leaving that send at exactly the same level as the signal on the left leaving the original channel. Everything's balanced. <laughs> Very, very cool indeed. And the other thing that's really cool about this is that it means that you only need a really, really simple fader tablet, and which only has to have a bunch of channels with a fader and a pan pot a MIDI controller. And then you can just switch inside Logic so your, your physical fader and pan are controlling the level and the pan of all the auxiliary sends, whichever auxiliary you choose. No need to reassign things on your little uh, mixer tablet. Yeah, Very, very, very cool indeed. Um, so that's that. Uh, let's move on and see what else we got.